Hello, my name is Neha Saju, and today I'm going to be talking about charter schools, school choice, and the students of color caught in between. So what are charter schools? You've probably heard the term on the news, but there's often little explanation of how charters are different from traditional public schools. Charters are educational institutions that are publicly funded. Try not to think too much about your tax dollars here, but privately run. So they're essentially a type of public school, but they don't have to follow state and district regulations. To some, this sounds like a recipe for disaster, but to others, it seemed like an alternative to the crumbling public school system. Even though charters only educate 10% of public school students in the U.S., they're a fast-growing movement, especially under the Trump administration. Former President Trump's Secretary of Education, Betsy DeVos, was actually a champion of privately run, publicly funded charter schools. And this leads us to the discussion of the school of choice debate. And school choice, also referred to as educational choice, is the ability for parents to select the schools that their children attend. And this actually leads to resulting problems of educational equity because allocating money away from traditional public schools means a loss of resources for the students still attending those schools. In an article by Andre and Perry called How Charter Schools Are Prolonging Segregation, there's a mention of data from the Associated Press which shows that in, from 2014 to 2015, 1,000 of the nation's charter schools had a minority enrollment of at least 99%. So this led me to ask, how do charter schools impact students of color, and can they be used as a means of addressing educational inequity? I used the U.S. News and World Ranking Report rankings to choose the top five charter schools in the nation and look at their minority breakdowns. The rankings only go up to 1,125, although there are around 7,427 charter schools in the United States. When we look at the highest ranked charter schools in the United States, we can see that while there is a high overall minority population, the majority of these students are actually Asian American. When we look at the Black and African American student population or the Hispanic and Latino student population, we see that these numbers are actually significantly lower than the number of Asian American students that are attending these same schools. However, when we look at the students that are, ranked, that are ranked, um, in the lower ranked charter schools, we can see that the overall minority population does not reflect a significantly higher percentage of Asian American students these numbers drop significantly, 1%, 0% from what we had seen before. And so this led me to ask, four out of the five of these schools are basis charter schools. So what's going on in the basis system? Are they doing something to recruit more Asian American students? Carol Burris, a former New York high school principal, also compared racial makeup for students at basis charter, but she stuck with the 18 schools in the Arizona area for the 2015 to 2016 school year. And she also found an over-enrollment of Asian American students and an under-enrollment of Hispanic and Latino students. According to this article, these differences in demographics are all within basis's control. Basis understands affluent markets and chooses to recruit students who are already high performers. There is no transportation. There are pricey suggested family contributions, and there is no free or reduced lunch program. Also, the curriculum is not built to retain struggling students. Ninth grade students in the basis system take either AP Calc AB or AP Calc BC. That is a course I and every other public school student took in the 12th grade. I did a little digging about the situation now. And for Basis Chandler, this is a quote straight from the website. On average, our students take over 11 AP exams prior to graduation. All seniors take a college counseling course daily. They can take capstone courses that are comparable to 200 and 300 level college courses. Just some examples are number theory, organic chemistry, and post-colonial literature. But when we look at this success and contrast it with sort of like what's going on underneath, there's actually a surprising effect that's shown from the 20, 2015 to 2016 retention rate. Seventh grade students, when they were starting out, 
there was a class of 130 students, but by the time they get to their senior year, this number drops to 54. And so this kind of points to why the basis system is succeeding. They cherry pick the best students and they work them into the ground. Yes, their national rankings are high, but the retention rates are low. And this isn't the point of public school education. If you had asked me about if charter schools can help to maintain or to ameliorate educational inequity based on the cha- based on Chandler's performance on on the basis charter school systems performance, I would say no. This is not the point of public education.